Good morning. Today is Wednesday. This is week two for business intelligence leadership and effective communication. I want to take a couple moments and check in with everybody. Um, this week's topic is to inspire a shared vision. What does that mean exactly? That means the type of leadership that makes people want to follow you. It makes people want to go wherever your vision is taking them either in an organization or on a team. It's the type of leadership that people will follow you without even knowing the destination. They have that much faith and that much trust and that much sincerity in believing that you've got their best interest and the best interest of the organization at heart in everything that you do. Where does that come from? That doesn't come from demanding it or asking for it. That comes from exhibiting the type of traits that people are looking for, that you involve them in the decisions, that you let them know the what, why, and how of your decisions. And what I mean by that is people don't want to be told, do it because I said so. People want to know what it is they're being asked to do, how they're supposed to do it, and why is it important. Now think about that. It's like a three-legged stool. What happens when you pull a leg out from under a stool if there's three legs? It collapses, doesn't it? Sure it does. So effective leadership and inspiring a vision is like a three-legged stool. One of the legs is explaining what it is you're asking someone to do, how it is they're to do it, and why it's important. All three of those legs are vital to inspiring a shared vision and effective leadership. Now also, there's going to be times in leadership where a leader may not be able to tell the team the exact reason that we're doing something because it may come from the top down and there's just not time for the discussion. But that needs to be shared as well. And what I mean by that is you can tell your team, we have to do this and it has a due date by April 1st, and I'm not at liberty right at this moment to share with you the reasons and the details behind it, and as soon as I can, I will. Now, we don't mind hearing that. What we mind is people saying, do this, 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 and never telling you the what is it, how to do it, and why it's important. Now, if on a few occasions, leaders have to say, I'm not at liberty to say right now, but I will as soon as I can. But the rest of the times they give the three-legged stool, then that inspires a shared vision. That's trust that they cannot tell you right now for whatever reason, but they will when they can. So what we're trying to do is let you know that what makes you feel like a leader is worth inspiring you to share their vision is probably the same thing in general with effective leadership. Um, visualize a leader or someone that you look up to that does these things. They tell you what it is you're being asked to do, how to do it, and why it's important. Think about people and come up with a few people that you feel like have those things and figure out how you feel about that and see if it is not that not the way you want people that work with and for you to feel about your leadership. Because this is not about just a checklist and answering questions for a class. It's about teaching you to be this person, to be this person that inspires a shared vision. That's what we want for you. Okay? So this week, today is Wednesday. You have your discussion initial post, which is another movie. And then Sunday, you have your discussion response post on the movie. And a case study, if you will, on... Best Buy, a Best Buy turnaround study. You have your readings. This is a lecture video where I summarize all of the content and then some extra videos. Read them if you will. If you don't feel like you need them, that's fine. Now, the Inspire Shared Vision, we're watching the movie Invictus with Morgan Freeman and Matt Damon. It's one of my favorite movies for leadership. So you will watch that movie. And you will answer the questions on the movie. On scene one, the theme looked 
to the future and need to exceed, you will answer those questions and you will post your initial post and then you will respond to a classmate using the RISE method with headings. The headings are Reflect, Inquire, Suggest, and Elevate. Okay. Now let's see. The assignment, Best Buy Successful Business Turnaround Strategy. What you're going to be doing and right here is a sample assignment of a student that submitted one that scored high points. You can look at that. The instructions, if you click on the red hyperlink, Best Buy Rising from Ashes to Lead New Retail Paradigm, in preparation for your capstone, which is due very soon, in about six weeks, create a professional presentation to Best Buy, not to me. Make your presentation as if you're making this presentation to the executives and the management team of Best Buy as their business intelligence consultant. On your written presentation with headings, have a summary, overarching challenge, use financial information, perceived obstacles, and small steps, small win opportunities. You will professionally complete all sections, again, making this presentation to the executives of Best Buy. In the executive summary, you're just going to outline the overarching challenge, the obstacle, solution, and winning opportunity for leadership. Okay, just a brief mention and overview because the details coming up in the sections. You always want to provide your audience in the initial paragraph just a quick, even if it's a bullet point, a quick bullet point of what they can expect to come in the presentation so that there's no surprises. It's like a road map. This is where we're going and these are the cities we're going to stop at. If you don't tell your audience initially what they can expect, you'll probably lose them early on. Okay. After you've created your written paper, create a keynote or PowerPoint of your presentation. Use mainly visuals, charts, and financial graphs. Very limited text. Let me repeat that. Very limited text. Now, why do I say that? Because that is best practices for data visualization. Remember, you're making this presentation to the executives of Best Buy. They don't want to be looking up here and trying to read your text. Okay? They wouldn't need you to make the presentation if that's what they were going to do. They need to be looking at visualizations and images and graphs of their financial situation. And you are talking to them with your words, your narration, your text. So use the notes section on the slides of the keynotes or the PowerPoints for what you're going to say, remembering that your audience does not see the notes section. Record your narrated presentation, upload to YouTube, and provide us the URL link. What will you deliver? Your written presentation in APA format, your PowerPoint presentation, and the link to your video. Now again, this is a precursor to your upcoming final capstone project. You're so far along now, you should have a really good foundational basis of what we're looking for. You're going as a business intelligence. You're using data, the actual numbers, to locate a challenge, something that you notice that needs work on, at which becomes an opportunity to use data with Power BI dashboards, what have you, to provide the solution to what you have found. Okay, That's what business intelligence professionals do. I look at financial statements all day and I can say, wow, while the revenue is increasing, Mr. and Mrs. Company, the net profit on the bottom line is going down. That doesn't make sense, does it? If my sales are going up, why is my profit going down? We're losing the money, the extra money, somewhere here in the middle. So looking at the data, I can clearly tell you that, well, there's a trend that the sales are going up, but the net profit is not. So obviously there's a disconnect in using the data to say, wow, my sales are going up, but my net profits are going down. What does that mean? So let's look at the categories in between and see what the problem is. We need some type of business intelligence solution, whether it be Power BI or anything else, that provides the frontline decision makers with real-time daily dashboards saying we're paying more for our supplies than we used to. That would cause the net profit to not rise with sales. Our labor is increasing. 
our overhead, our rent, you'll be able to see what that is. Because what a company needs to do is they need real-time information to the decision makers every day so they can say, my sales are going up. What are my expenses doing in my department? If my sales are going down, I need to reduce my expenses right along the same trend line. So what everything that we're doing is trying to use data to tell the executives and the decision makers what they can do. If I don't have that data, I don't know. I'm, all I'm seeing is the sales going up. I'm like, yes, sales are going up. I don't know that it's not making it to the bottom line. So with business intelligence and using data and dashboards and graphs and visualizations, we can provide that specific information to every department that's making decisions to spend money so they can say, uh-oh, sales are going down. I need to adjust some of my expenses down. Sales are going up. Let me see what my expenses are doing. Are my expenses and my costs still staying the same so that that extra money makes it to the bottom line? So that's what we're trying to do. So I hope this is helpful. I look forward to seeing what you come up with here. And I really look forward to seeing your final capstone project um, the second week of month 12. Are you ready to do something spectacular? I can't wait to see it. Let's go.